Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. No. As for this video we have a new GPU comparison, this time the RTX 4070 versus the 4070 Ti versus the RX 7900 XT. And well, in the past I've already done something similar, at least with the 4070 Ti and the RX 7900 XT, but since newer drivers came out and Actually, some games got updated, like for example, The Last of Us, Forza Horizon 5, where the RX 7900 XT was performing quite, quite bad actually, uh, in, compar in comparison sorry, to what it is right now, so I decided to retest once again the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti in those exact, in those exact games, sorry, in order to, um, to make things more relatable to the current performance. And of course, the RTX 4070 is just there in the mix for you to see the performance that it can achieve versus the other two cards. In terms of pricing in new Ag US, we have the RTX 4070 at roughly $599, also bringing Overwatch 2 included. We have the RTX 4070 Ti at $799, so $200 above the 4070. And then we have the RX 7900 XT at $749 with Starfield included. As for the European prices, we have the RTX 4070 in Mind Factory Deutschland at 595 euros. We have the RTX 4070 Ti at 819 euros, the minimum of course, and then we have the RX 7900 XT at 799 euros, which is a bit more than we have in America. But well, it is the same old news. So the main point of making this video is to actually see if the RTX 4070 Ti is still worth it over the RX 7900 XT or if with recent updates the 7900 XT is actually a better buy than the RTX 4070 Ti. And without any further delays, let's go to the benchmarks. But before, today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, bringing you all the software deals you need like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Plague Tale Requiem, as usual, is our first game performing usually better on the Nvidia side, still, the RX 7900 XT manages to outperform the RTX 4070 Ti by 8%, which is not much of course, but always a plus. At 1440p all the cards are able to perform quite well, with the RTX 4070 Ti being 26% faster than the RTX 4070, but around 11% slower than the RX 7900 XT which is pushing around 120 average FPS. At 4K, this game gets way more demanding than before, with none of the Nvidia cards reaching the 60 average FPS mark and the RX 7900 XT pushing 65, being 19% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and 50% faster than the RTX 4070. Now with Assassin's Creed Valhalla that will be overtaken by Mirage as soon as it gets fixed because yes, it will be broken at launch most likely. In this game the RTX 4000 series from Nvidia work pretty well compared to their previous generation that was being massacred by AMD's RX 6000 series. But at 1440p the RTX 4070 Ti starts losing some ground to the RX 7900 XT that is now 13% faster due to the massive performance uplift given by Smart Access Memory. 
and that 4K things are more of the same, with all cards performing very well, but with the RX 7900 XT being the top dog here. In Cyberpunk 2077, at 1080p, the RTX 4070 Ti fares exceptionally well, basically matching the RX 7900 XTX rasterization performance, and we're talking about over 180 average FPS, which is a lot. As we go into 1440p though, the RTX 4070 loses some ground once again, with the RX 7900 XT being the fastest card by 15% with the little RX 4070 also doing a pretty decent job at almost 100 average FPS. And it is only at 4K that we see the biggest difference, as once again the RTX 4070 Ti struggles to reach the 60 average FPS mark, while the RX 7900 XT is pushing 73, being now 28% faster. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is one of those games that is very well known to run much better on the AMD cards. At 1080p the RTX 4070 Ti is not much faster than its little brother, with the RX 7900 XT being 36% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and 63% faster than the RTX 4070. At 1440p the differences are still huge, with the RX 7900 XT pushing over 170 average FPS, while the RTX 4070 Ti struggles to push 130 which is a major difference mostly for competitive players. At 4K though, all cards can achieve at least 60 average FPS, but the RX 7900 XT still simply decimates the Nvidia cards in this title, which was expected, but always welcomed. Forza Horizon 5 is one of those games where the RX 7900 XT was performing considerably worse than the RTX 4070 Ti, due to some bug, I guess, but with the recent driver updates, the same is now outperforming it by 16%. Nice to see AMD fixing their performance issues on these cards. As we go into 1440p the performance difference isn't that much in between these cards, since all of them deliver very respectable results thing that doesn't really change much at 4K, as the RX 7900 XT is indeed faster than the RTX 4070 Ti, in this case by 18%, but all cards are pushing over 100 average FPS. So in my book, it's all good. It seems that more and more newer games are making use of AMD's RDNA 3 improvements and Hogwarts Legacy is one of those games. At 1080p the RX 7900 XT is 26% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti that somehow gets no performance boost from overclocking, as those results are within the margin of error. Strange. At 1440p the victory turns into a massacre, where the RX 7900 XT is now 32% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti the same 4070 Ti that now loses performance with resizable bar enabled. This card seems to get results all over the place in this game, which is odd. At 4K we have once again the same scenario as most of the previous games, where the RTX 4070 struggles to get to the 60 average FPS mark, while the RX 7900 XT is pushing a comfortable 70. Approach Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is type Cessna 152 with Microsoft Flight Simulator, we're kind of CPU bottlenecked at 1080p, hence the RTX 4070 having more or less the same results as the 4070 Ti. 
The reason you see the RX 1700 XT being faster is because AMD's drivers have less CPU overhead, so the AMD cards can push a bit more FPS in CPU driven scenarios. As we go into 1440p the bottleneck goes mostly away and the RX 7900 XT is once again the fastest card, delivering a better experience overall even though it consumes a lot more power. And at 4K, well, the RX 7900 XT is once again faster, but the Nvidia cards still do fairly well considering the RTX 4070 for example consumes only around 200 watts. Now running Vulkan with Rainbow Six Extraction. At 1080p the NVIDIA results are all over the place in this game, as usual. I don't really know what's happening here, but with all the RTX 4000 series that I've tested so far, deliver these kind of results, all of them in this game. At 1440p the NVIDIA cards do seem to get more stable and the RX 7900 XT is now 20% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti, that is 23% faster than the RTX 4070. We get things well scaled, I guess. And this time at 4K the gap is actually smaller instead of bigger, which is something that happens in this game every time I test AMD vs Nvidia. The AMD cards perform better at 1080p and 1440p, but at 4K the gap gets smaller. Our second Vulcan title is Red Dead Redemption 2. At 1080p, although the minimums are quite lower with the Nvidia card, somehow, the averages on the RTX 4070 Ti are actually pretty good, being very close to the RX 7900 XT, thing that doesn't change much at 1440p, where the RTX 4070 Ti's averages are only slightly behind the ones of the RX 7900 XT, which is cool to see as well. And strangely, that gets maintained at 4K, where the RX 7900 XT is not much faster in terms of averages, but delivers a much smoother experience overall. If I remember correctly, Guardians of the Galaxy is the first game on the list where we have the RTX 4070 Ti actually being faster than the RX 7900 XT, even when we're running at 1080p and we're CPU bottlenecked. At 1440p things don't really change much though, and the RTX 4070 Ti is still slightly faster than the RX 7900 XT, being only at 4K that the pace changes and the RX 7900 XT is finally able to outmatch the RTX 4070 Ti. By the way, very soon this game benchmark will be exchanged maybe with Baldur's Gate 3, just to let you know. The Last of Us, like Forza Horizon 5, was a title where before the recent driver updates, the RTX 4070 Ti was faster than the RX 7900 XT, as can be seen in the non-smart access memory results for example, but with the recent driver updates and game updates, enabling smart access memory, the RX 7900 XT now outmatches the RTX 4070 Ti by 16%. Once again, awesome to see the games performing even better with recent drivers. At 1440p the difference gets even bigger with the RTX 4070 Ti achieving 111 average FPS and the RX 7900 XT delivering 133, being 20% faster. At 4K things get even darker for the RTX 4070 Ti that loses performance with resizable bar and struggles to deliver 60 average FPS, while the RX 7900 XT is delivering a solid 74. Interesting how these games results turned out with some software updates. Brother! Our last rasterization title is God of War, where the MD cards are usually better as well and the RX 7900 XT is no exception. At 1080p it is 26% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti and 56% faster than the RTX 4070. Moving to 1440p doesn't really change the hierarchy, just makes the results slightly different, with the RX 7900 XT still delivering the most FPS 
and at 1440p ultra wide things are once again more of the same with the RX 7900 XT consuming a lot more power for sure of course but also delivering consistently higher performance and this all leads us to the 12 games average where we can see the RTX 4070 Ti being 14% faster than the RTX 4070 at 1080p 284% faster at 1440p and 23% faster at 4K which is kind of ok since we're talking about only a performance tier above. Comparing the RTX 4070 Ti to the RX 7900 XT though, since they currently cost the same, the RX 7900 XT is just overall faster, being around 15% faster at all resolutions in terms of averages and around 20% faster in terms of 1% lows. But once again, take in consideration that not everything is about pure raster performance. So let's see how these cards perform in terms of ray tracing. We're not from here either. Silantius left us up here a year ago. As we immediately see with Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, in terms of full ray tracing performance, the previously faster RX 7900 XT is more or less on the level of a much cheaper RTX 4070, with the RTX 4070 Ti being 18% faster at 1080p, 27% faster at 1440p and 34% faster at 4K. Although we should note that the RX 7900 XT does have better 1% lows than the Nvidia cards at all resolutions and it doesn't really matter if you have higher FPS numbers if you're still having stutters as well. In Cyberpunk 2077 things get really bad for the RX 7900 XT though, where it is even slower than the much cheaper RTX 4070, with and without upscaling technologies. I believe this is due to the game's ray tracing also using CUDA cores, at least from what people told me, so with the recent release of Rock'em 4 Windows if CD Projekt wants to, well, we might be able to see better performance on the AMD cards here. At 1440p it is more of the same, with the RX 7900 XT barely matching the RTX 4070 and being completely stomped by the RTX 4070 Ti, in this case with it being 29% faster without the LSS and 34% faster with it. Crazy. Gladly, Resident Evil 4 does not follow this pattern, as in this game the RX 7900 XT is faster in terms of rasterization and virtually matches the RTX 4070 Ti in the ray tracing performance, which is nice to see. At 1440p things are more or less the same for all cards, with the scaling of the results being oddly equal to 1080p, frankly more than it should be, and at 1440p ultra wide we see the RX 7900 XT pulling ahead in terms of rasterization, but once again being side by side with the RTX 4070 Ti in terms of ray tracing, which is actually quite impressive. Spider-Man Remastered is quite CPU bottlenecked here both for the RX 7900 XT and RTX 4070 Ti. Once again the AMD card has slightly better results here due to lower CPU overhead in the drivers. At 1440p the results are actually quite surprising, the RX 7900 XT is not only outperforming the RTX 4070 Ti in terms of rasterization but also in terms of ray tracing, with the Nvidia cards showing as it seems to be kind of a CPU ray tracing bottleneck since this game's ray tracing is highly dependent on the CPU. But the most impressive thing is that even at 4K where the CPU bottleneck goes away, the RX 7900 XT is still faster than the RTX 4070 Ti, even when using ray tracing. What a really odd thing to see, especially in this game. The final part of the video has to do with upscalers. In God of War at 1440p there isn't really much more to see in terms of performance, apart from the poor FPS boost gained with both the RX 7900 XT and the RTX 4070, that somehow deliver around 15% performance uplift compared to the 20% performance uplift with the RTX 4070 Ti. Thing that completely flips at 1440p ultra wide, where the RTX 4070 has now the biggest performance uplift, with the RTX 4070 Ti having the smallest one, and with the RX 7900 XT being more or less in line with the previous results. And the last benchmark of today's video is Spider-Man Remastered with all the upscaling technologies at 4K. 
we can immediately see one thing. XCSS works better with the Nvidia cards than with the AMD ones, as XCSS on the RX 7900 XT delivers only a mild boost over native, while FSR gives a pretty decent boost. This might be due to how the newer versions of XCSS work since they also use the neural network like the LSS, so Nvidia GPUs work better with it. Still, in terms of raw performance, the LSS and FSR are still the way to go, as even with NVIDIA and Intel GPUs, FSR works perfectly, while XCSS only works well with Intel GPUs. But I'm not complaining, at all. At least it works with other GPUs, something that the LSS does not. Let's move to the conclusion. And well, as for the conclusion... <laughs> As for the conclusion, well, you actually saw the results, where the RX 7900 XT is usually the fastest card in terms of rasterization, so from, let's say, 15% in the averages at all resolutions, more or less, to, let's say, 22% in the 1% low, so it not, it not also brings uh, better average FPS, so better FPS overall, but also brings higher smoothness compared to the 4070 Ti. And I mean, even that even happens in terms of, let's say, ray tracing benchmarks, for example, Metro Exodus, where the RTX 4070 Ti is obviously much faster in terms of rasteriz uh, in rasterization, much faster in terms of, of ray tracing, of course, the results are better, but the 1% lows are much lower than with the RX 7900 XT, meaning that once again, the, well, the smoothness with that AMD card will be much better and the game will just feel much better overall due to having way higher 1% lows. And with both cards actually costing roughly the same right now, the question still stands in the air. Which card should you get? Well, in my opinion, as always, it depends. If you want to go cheaper, you have the RTX 4070, which in my opinion is one of the best cards that you can get in this price tag, of course, because although we don't have, we don't have that much performance packed in there, we also have just 200 watts of power draw. We, ha we have a card that can be easily overclocked. But on the other hand, if you go to the previous generation cards, let's say like the 3080, or maybe let's say the 6800 XT, you have a card performing exactly the same, but costing way less. But at the same time, you're getting the older generation and not the most recent one. You can't use the LSS 3, you can't use the LSS because you can only use XCSS and FSR, and in between many other things, you also have higher power draw. But in my opinion, if you can get indeed a cheaper RTX 4070 and you don't need more than that, you're playing let's say at 1080p or light gaming at 1440p, the 4070 is the way to go. If you want to take it a step further and you are kind of in between the RTX 4070 Ti and the RX 7900 XT, then I actually advise you, in my opinion, to go with the 7900 XT. Because as you saw, compared to the previous video, the RX 7900 XT is actually much faster now, it is faster in almost all titles that you throw uh, in between both cards, the, the 7900 XT is faster in terms, of, in terms of rasterization, it actually handles ray tracing way, way better than expected versus the 4070 Ti, because apart from Metro Exodus, the ray tracing results are more or less on par with each other, and, and well, you have more VRAM, you have more raw power, and with more driver updates, as we saw right now, the 7900 XT is supposed to become better and better with time, as the 4070 Ti, well, most likely won't. But at the same time, once again, the 4070 Ti consumes less power, and it is important to note that so far, FSR 3 was not released yet, it is supposed to be released in one or two months, of course, but in terms of features, we do have once again the LSS with the 4070 Ti and we have the LSS 3 frame generation, which for some people might be a thing. They might like the frame generation, they might, they might enjoy the frame generation. For me, well, I only use it if I absolutely need it and usually in third person games because in first person games you can get motion sickness. Well, you have the LSS 3 and for some people that might be it and might be a deal breaker to not have FSR 3. But overall, I do advise the 7900 XT. And well guys, I guess that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video as it really does help a lot uh, because it's me, me, myself um, and my other me in the channel, basically. It's all of us just in one head. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. Yeah, that's basically it. Fuck it, let's go.